Hi, George here, and I'll be showing you how to make a soft vignette like I have right around this figure right here. But there are a couple of tricks to get this exactly right. First off, of course, we need to get the original picture, which is this one right here. And I got this over on Pixabay, which is my favorite site for getting free images. Let's switch over there and download this picture. And here we go, we're at Pixabay, and I'll put this link in the description. Now, the one that we want is right up here. I've already searched this out. Here we go. And we want to download this. Here's the download button. Now notice that I'm logged in right now. It's free to get an account here, so no reason not to go ahead and get an account. It just makes downloading just a little bit easier. Click on download. And we want the 1920 by 1442. This is approximately four by six, which is the standard size for Photoshop elements. Choose download. And I'll save this right here onto my hard drive. I have a folder here I call projects. I just put temporary files inside here. I'll save that, choose save. And there we go, that's been done. Okay, let's get that out of the way. And I'll close this file. We don't need this any longer, there we go. And we'll open up that new file. So file open and then navigate to that folder. Mine's right here and choose open. And there we go, I'm just gonna dock that right there. Okay, so here's our basic image. A Couple of important things to mention right now. First one is that I'll be moving all of my new videos over to a new channel here on YouTube and that's HTG Photo. I'll put a link for that in the description. So if you want to keep on seeing new videos, make sure you go over there. I'll be starting that starting in September. All the new videos will be then going over there. Also, if you want to really learn how to use Photoshop Elements, a lot more than I'm just showing the few things here in YouTube, take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements, and I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's go ahead and get back to work on this. The first thing we want to do is to make a backup copy. So over here to the background, right click where it says background, duplicate layer, choose OK. It gives us a safety layer, and we're going to be changing the background as well. So let's make one more of these. Just right click and duplicate layer, choose OK, and I'll hide that one. That's kind of my safety. This will be the new background, and here's our working image. Let's hide the background for the moment. Now I want to have a selection around the girl. This we have these little kind of furry things sticking out here. I'm going to keep in some of that stuff as well. So for this, we'll go over here and grab the lasso tool. Just the standard lasso tool. I have no feathering on this one down here. And it's set for a new selection right there. And then to start any old place, it doesn't really matter where, and go ahead and draw in this selection. I'm just gonna freehand this. This doesn't need to be exact because what we're doing, it's not gonna be that critical. Let's go clear around like this. I'm staying just outside those, the tips of those little bits of fur flying out there and then just outside of her jacket right here and then cross the bottom and just go back over the beginning. And here is our basic selection. Now, the trick on this one is you want to make this selection bigger than this, but I want to make it a controlled growth. And you do that by going up here to the select menu, come down to modify and expand. We can make this bigger. Now the number you use in here will depend upon the size of your picture. For this particular image at about four by six inches, 50 pixels works out pretty well. So it's a good place to start when you're trying this. Choose OK. And notice how that just grew that out quite a fair ways here. But it's an even amount of expansion clear around. And the reason why I like doing it this way, I can always go back and try it again and use a different setting on that to adjust the amount. Now this is going to give us the amount of gradient we have. And that's our next step. So to do this, we need to come in and convert this into a layer mask. So that's right up here. There's our layer mask button right above our layers. Click on that. There's our layer mask. And so we have a hard edge. But the hard edge in here is caused by the layer mask, which means that we can blur the layer mask out and soften that edge down. And that's our main trick in here. So for that, go up to the filter menu, come down to blur, and you want the Gaussian blur right here. Let's bring this up. I'm going to put a clear back to the beginning so you see that there's our hard edge. And then as I pull this in towards the right, you'll see that edge is slowly getting softer. And what you want to do is take it out so you're no longer really seeing an edge in here. That's what we're going for. So just keep on pulling it out until that edge just disappears, which is right around in here someplace. I'm not really seeing an edge any longer. It's just blending into the background. And right there is where you want it to be. In this case, that's at 52.4. Don't just copy that though, actually try this and see when you see that edge going away because it'll be somewhere around here, but you want to 
choose that based upon your picture and how your picture looks. Okay, let's choose OK. If I bring our background back in again, we don't see that, but we need to now change the background to a different background and we'll then have that nice effect blurring into the background. Now in this case, with her fur hood, it's kind of a winter scene. You can even see some snow on the bridge back in here. So let's go for a winter scene background. And for that, come down here, bottom right hand corner, it says graphics, click on that. I have my set for by type right here. And it's also set for backgrounds up here. And there's some good winter things quite a ways down. I'm just gonna pull it straight down like this. And then down in here, we get into some wintry kind of stuff. It's kind of a bluish thing. That's interesting, not really winter, it's kind of underwater. But even here, you can see how the vignette is now working really well. Here's some snowflakes, kind of a Christmas card effect. The one that I like is this one right here with kind of a bouquet snowing background effect. We'll use that one. Now, the last thing I want to do is to play around with the values of the girl herself. So let's go back to that layer up here and let's add in an adjustment layer on this. So go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and you want levels right there. Where it says use previous layer, check that. We want this only being applied to the girl's layer and not to the background layer. That's why we checked that one. Now in here, your blacks are the left-hand side, your whites are the right-hand side, your mid-tones are in here. We can see that most of her picture is pretty dark. We already know that. So if you want to darken down the darks, take the dark side, the black side, and move that in a bit, you can see that it brings the darks down. I want them just a little bit darker, a little bit more contrasty, about in here someplace. And I want to bring the whites in, same idea, a little bit more contrasty. And then it just makes the picture just a bit more interesting. There's an eyeball right here. If you click on that, you can see the before and the after. So you can see it's now much more interesting, much more exciting, it kind of pops a bit better just by increasing our contrast. Now, the reason I like using the levels and not the brightness contrast control is that I can control the darks and the lights separately and even control the mid-tone values if I want to right in here. And I think right about there is looking pretty good. Close that down. Now, if you're new here to Photoshop Elements, and I know a few people are brand new to the program, to save this out, a couple of steps. First, go up here, click on File and Save. This will save it back into the same location. Because we have layers over here, right-hand side, it's going to be saving it as a Photoshop file, a PSD file. That's the standard format here for Photoshop Elements. And just choose Save on that. Now, when you go back to that, you'll retain, you'll keep your layers in here so you can go back and rework this if you want to. That's why you want to always save it as a PSD or Photoshop file, just to give you that ability to readjust or to fix in the future. Now, if you're going to go out for a print output, you're already fine. You can print right from the PSD file, no problem. And this is over here under File, and it's right here, Print. Now, if you want to use this on the internet, on the web, you want a JPEG or a PNG file, then what you want to do is go up to File. You can either do Save As or Save for Web. I'll do Save for Web in here. And here's our JPEG right there. Standard PNG is a PNG 24. That's the one you'd want right here. Now, PNG files are a little bit larger than JPEG files, but they retain a bit more detail. So if you're caring about the quality, go for the PNG file. Down here you can see the size. This is 3.6 megs in here for the PNG. 10.6 for the original, so it's about a third of the size. This is switches over here to the JPEG, JPEG at the high setting, and that's 439, so space is important, then go for the JPEG. Then just choose save, it'll save back into the same location. With, now in this case, I don't wanna go over my original, so I'm just going to change the name right here, just like this. I'll call it girl in fur hood, choose save, and there we go, that's all done. Notice that I'm still in my PSD file. You can see that right up here. Now, if you like this video, make sure you go over and subscribe to my HDG photo channel. That's where all the new ones will be starting in only about two weeks. So make sure you go over there and subscribe over there. Also, take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. It is the best way to learn this program. And if you really enjoyed this video, why don't you send me a thanks? There's a little button down there that says thanks down under the bottom right-hand corner of the video. Just click on that, send me a thanks. I really appreciate that. Okay, and I'll see you next time.